Welcome to Chuck Builds. Today I'm going to show you how I used Philips Hue light bulbs and a cheap Zigbee motion sensor to automate the lights in this little coffee nook in my kitchen. I think this is a great automation to recommend because it's a nice quality of life, not reaching for a light switch. It feels a little bit smarter and automatic in your home, but because all we're using is light bulbs and a battery motion sensor, it doesn't require any real skills to do this. If you can unscrew a light bulb, you can do this automation and it's great for renting because there's no built-ins. We didn't change the light switch out on the wall. You can hold on to your old light bulbs until you move out and put them right back in and take your smart bulbs with you. These smart bulbs last a really long time and are really power efficient. And this is a great way to start making your house smart for cheap. It's very straightforward. We're gonna install the lights. We're gonna pair it to Home Assistant with Zigbee to MQTT. I'll pair this motion sensor. I wanted to make this just to kind of share how I do this and why we won't need to replace these light switches. I think some people get carried away with smart lighting and going to the light switches. I much prefer the control over the brightness and color of the bulb. The bulbs themselves are about 40 bucks for two. And then this motion sensor I think is like $10. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off the lights so I can get up to this light fixture and take out the existing lights. There's just a little knob down here. I am acutely aware that I am literally filming how to replace a light bulb. So with the cover removed, I'm going to unscrew the existing bulbs. I like the white ambiance because you can change it throughout the day to be more yellow at night and more blue white during the day. And I really like that effect. Before I turn them back on, I went to Home Assistant, Zigbee to MQTT, and clicked Permit Join for new devices. Now when I turn on these lights, they should blink that they're getting picked up inside of Zigbee to MQTT, and I'll be able to control them through Home Assistant. Inside of Home Assistant, I'm gonna rename these new light bulbs that we just got to Coffee Pantry Light 1 and Coffee Pantry Light 2. I'm gonna update their IDs. And then we have the motion sensor here as well. So I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go to groups and I like to do this with my lights groups. So instead of pinging each individual light, it'll ping the group of lights. So we'll make one called Coffee Pantry Lights, create the group. So now if we look at the group, so then we'll click on Coffee Pantry Lights and then choose the Coffee Pantry Light 1 as our device and click Add to Group. And we'll come down here and grab Coffee Pantry Light 2 and click Add to Group as well. Now, part of the reason that I like these Philips Hue Ambience Lights is because you can change the color temperature and their brightness. So I'm gonna go to my Settings, Integrations, and then Adaptive Lighting Add-on. And I'm gonna just click my All Group to configure and add this new coffee pantry lights group right here. So I click out of it and come down and click submit to make sure that's saved so that the temperature and brightness of my lights will match the other ones in my house and adjust throughout the day. So the last thing I'll do before I put the cover back on this light fixture is I have an Acara motion sensor that's Zigbee. And I'm going to resync this to my Zigbee network with these lights on and unobstructed so that this motion sensor has a strong connection to Zigbee to MQTT because these bulbs are on mains power. They're going to act as repeaters or routers for our Zigbee network. So it'll make a stronger connection. So I'll just press the button on here until we get a blue flash. There's the flash and we should be good to go and we can do the rest inside of Home Assistant. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and put the cover back on. So now we're gonna to go to Node Red, which is my preferred automation platform. Home Assistant's built-in automations could absolutely do this, but it's changed a lot recently and I'm just not that comfortable with it yet and I won't be able to help troubleshoot. I really like Node Red's visual flow-based uh, process and it just helps me think these things through. So I'm gonna use this to set it up and I'm gonna do it from scratch. Um, so I'm gonna start with a comment and this is just so we know what, what it is. When we come back in the future, what does this flow or this uh, string of automation do? And we'll do coffee, pantry, lights, motion. So the first node we'll use is an events state node so that when a state is changed on a specific entity, it triggers something. So this will be coffee, pantry, lights, motion, sensor. We'll do 
coffee pantry light occupancy is the binary sensor that we want here and we'll leave the rest alone and click done and then we'll take a switch node so depending on whether this is on or off we want to do something different so we'll do on for one of these we'll click add down here we'll do off for the other so we'll grab a service node or an action node and drag this over here. We're gonna connect these two nodes. We're going to choose an action and we're gonna do it based on the domain. So we can type light dot and it gives us our light commands. We can toggle it or just turn it on. Call us turn on coffee pantry lights. And then we're gonna grab an entity and do coffee pantry lights. And we want lights because that's the group you could do light one and light two, but then it's sending a separate turn on message for each of those. And this helps cut down on the network chatter for a Zigbee network. So I'll click done here. And then we are gonna do a very similar one for turning it off. And for the sake of time, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. We're gonna change it to light turn off. We'll update the name of this to off, but we'll keep it as our target coffee pantry light. So the action just changes and we can click done there. So the last thing this automation needs is something called a trigger node. This trigger node is going to receive the message that nobody has been seen from the motion sensor and it's going to decide to wait and we can give it a set period of time to wait. By default, it's 250 milliseconds. We'll give it probably a minute or two. It's gonna wait and then it'll say turn off the lights. But by waiting, if you walk back in front of that within that minute delay, it'll stay on and it feels a little bit more seamless and the lights won't turn off on you when you're not ready for them too. It gives you a little bit of control over the automation and prevents the light from feeling a little bit out of sync. So to wire this up, we'll connect the switch node to our trigger node and our trigger node to the lights. We'll double click on the trigger node and we'll go through this from top to bottom. So immediately when it receives a message from the switch that no motion has been received, we don't want it to say anything. So we'll change this to send nothing. And then we're gonna wait and we can control this wait. So I'll do a wait of one minute because I'm gonna be pretty quick in and out. I really am just making or grabbing coffee, but if it turns off on me too soon, I can always come back in here and bump it up to two or three minutes. And then after that one minute has passed, it can send something. In this case, it's sending the number zero, but we could say the string off. It doesn't really matter because anything that's going to this uh, action node is going to turn off the lights. It doesn't really matter what it receives, just that it re receives something. So with those in, we'll click deploy and our automation is done and we're good to go. There is something else that we can adjust to give us more control over how this automation works and to make sure that it works like you want it to. So we'll go to our Zigbee to MQTT section and then we're gonna scroll through our devices until we find our coffee pantry motion sensor right here and we'll click on that. And we can go to settings specific. I have my occupancy timeout to be set to 30 seconds. The reason this is important is because by default it's 90 seconds. So if you had set this trigger to be less than 90 seconds, like we have with one minute, it could feel like it's out of sync and not responding to how you intended for this to work. But because this is an area that I'm gonna clear out pretty quickly, I'm gonna walk in, grab coffee, walk out. I don't want it to wait a minute and a half before then waiting another minute to turn off the lights. It's almost two and a half minutes of me not being in there. It's not a big deal, but this isn't a very sensitive area for me. Um, so I'm gonna set this to 30 so that it's pretty quick when I walk out of the pantry area, the light turns off pretty quickly as well. So now with the automation set, when I walk in here, the lights should turn on and they automatically color adjusted brightness and temperature to the rest of my house. So it blends right in and will adjust as the day goes on. Using a battery PIR motion sensor is going to be very useful for being able to hide this in weird, weird areas and being able to put it somewhere that doesn't have an outlet but because of that, it's really sensitive to only seeing motion like you walking by. If you're sitting still somewhere in the kitchen, like eating at a table, it might not see you. And in that case, I would recommend that you check out a millimeter wave sensor. This one would plug into wall power using a USB-C connector and it can see you a lot better and keep alive that light while you're sitting there. 
However, in this given space, it wouldn't work well for me because I don't have any outlets available to me that I could place this to see me. I could maybe run a wire and hide it in the corner somewhere, but I don't spend that much time in this space. And so a Acara PIR motion Zigbee sensor is gonna be just enough for me and it's really, really cheap. Hopefully you found this helpful and maybe this gives you some ideas on places that you can make smart in your home for pretty cheap. I will have an Amazon affiliates link to these hue bulbs that I use and this motion sensor that I use, but there's tons of different kinds of hue bulbs for all kinds of places in your house, whether it's puck lights in the ceiling or bulbs like this or a lamp somewhere in your room. There's lots of options for pretty cheap. You can get these motion sensors and add a little bit of smarts to your house and make sure it's temporary as a rental without having to mess with any real electrical wiring. Just replacing a switch and dropping a motion sensor could be all you need. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comments.